And what we have here is we have a signed document by Robert Morris, and we also have a letter signed by Robert Morris. Now, the reason why Robert Morris is my favorite is because he teaches us all a lesson about patriotism that we should adhere to and our schools should know a lot about. The first thing you need to know about Robert Morris is he was the Bill Gates of the United States of America in 1776. And what do I mean by that? He had what? Money. Yeah, he had all the money. He had it all. And you want to know something? He didn't want to go to war with England. He was making too much money off the king. He didn't want to get involved in a war with the colonies. He was making money off the colonists. He was making money off of France. He was making money off of everybody. He was wealthy. But it was very important, our founding fathers realized, that they should have this Pennsylvanian in the Continental Congress because you need the guy with the money. <laughs> so on the first vote of the Declaration of Independence, where Robert Morris was, they all got up and said, all right, all those in favor of independence on July 1st, say aye, and what did he do? He voted no. <laughs> he argued how we shouldn't declare independence and how we should work things out. On July the 2nd, however, when we did vote for independence, he abstained. Ben Franklin was sitting on him. No. <laughs> he abstained. But most importantly, on August 2nd, 1776, Robert Morris signed the Declaration of Independence. And thank goodness he did. Because it wasn't very short after that that George Washington got backed off of New York, back through New Jersey, across the, uh, uh, the uh, Delaware River in Valley Forge, and he couldn't pay his troops. And his troops said, George, you know, we love you. We love you very much, but I got a wife and children at home, and if I don't get my, my pay, how are we going to feed them? How are we going to take care of them? We're going to have to leave you. So George Washington wrote this frantic letter to Robert Morris, and Robert Morris sent the 10,000 pounds that bailed us out of the Battle of, I mean, uh, that, that gave us the Battle of Trenton and saved us in Valley Forge. The other interesting thing about Robert Morris as they made him the Minister of Finance. And in the 1780s campaign, which is the crucial campaign that uh, led up to the uh, Battle of Yorktown, he raised $1.4 million, which would be like raising $15 billion today to fight the war. I can tell you this about Robert Morris, who was the financier of the Revolutionary War, if it wasn't for him, they would have hanged George Washington, they would have hanged Thomas Jefferson, they would have hanged Benjamin Franklin, and the whole lot of rebels. It was this man here that financed the entire Revolutionary War. After the war, we had this thing on the revision of Articles of Confederation. And they needed somebody to go to twist the arms for George Washington to get that Constitution passed. In fact, the governor who actually dragged George Washington to the Constitutional Convention refused to sign the Constitution, Edmund Jennings Randolph, because he didn't like it. But Robert Morris was there as a delegate for Pennsylvania, and Robert Morris twists a lot of arms, and Robert Morris is a signer of the United States Constitution. Robert Morris right after George Washington was elected president of the United States, he turned to him and said, Robert, you know, I want you to be my secretary of what? Treasury. Right. I want to be my secretary of treasury. But Robert Morris said, no, you're going to need me in the United States Senate because you're going to need me to get those treaties passed. You're going to need me to get the votes through to you. Over here is my underling. His name is Alexander Hamilton. Do a great job for you. And that's how we got Alexander Hamilton through Robert Morris. Robert Morris did run for the United States Senate, and it just so happens Pennsylvania was the first state to hold a U.S. Senate election. And he was the first United States Senator ever. After he served in the United States Senate, he had a big vision. And his vision was the North American Land Company. 
And what Robert Morris decided to do is he was going to take his millions and he was going to invest it into this company and he started buying up land here in Pittsburgh and he bought land over there in West Virginia and he bought land up there in Western New York and he bought all around Philadelphia and in New Jersey and he was doing extremely well acquiring this land, doing his big vision of the North American Land Company and then all of a sudden the real estate market crashed and the richest man in the United States of America was now the poorest man in the United States of America. And all the creditors were banging on their doors, trying to get money from Robert Morris, and he didn't have it. Robert Morris went over to John Adams to look for help, but John Adams wouldn't help him. It'd be kind of like Henry Hyde going to Bill Clinton and asking for a favor. They just don't like it. It isn't going to happen. George Washington over here, George couldn't help him because George was at Mount Vernon, retired, and he was in financial trouble because most of his holdings were in land. So what did they do to Robert Morris? The man who signed the Declaration of Independence, the man who financed the entire Revolutionary War, the man who signed the United States Constitution, gave us Alexander Hamilton, and was the first United States Senator ever. Does anybody know? Yeah, he ran up in prison. They throw him in prison. For how long? Three and a half years this man routed in prison. And right here is a letter from his jail cell asking help from one of his former partners, who I'm not even going to mention, who didn't even bother to respond. And the way he stayed out of prison is he had a, finally Congress decided to pass a law, and that was called the bankruptcy law. And he had to prove himself that he was bankrupt. And here's an actual note signed by Robert Morris that is not X'd out. He never paid it. And on the back of it, it's docketed by his bankruptcy ju uh, judges that it was used in his trial to prove he was bankrupt to get him out of jail. And there is the story of Robert Morris, who died really penniless after being released for jail. So I say to you, the next time you volunteer for a political campaign, and nobody thanks you. And the next time you run for office and lose, and everybody laughs at you. Or the next time you do anything for your nation, and nobody really seems to care, go home, get down on your knees, and thank God they didn't throw you in jail like Robert Morris. Thank you.